Hello and welcome to uh, the second class of Path of Excel University. Uh, this episode is going to be bargain hunting and today we are going to talk about pathofexcel.com slash trade. Let's see. And POE trade. And I'd say generally if you aren't already you should be using pathofexcel.com slash trade. It is generally the better one. Um, I'm still struggling myself a little bit. Because I'm so used, I used POE trade for so many years. Um, that it's just like, let's see, I'll show you both just so you see the differences. This is the one I'm very used to using, so I know everything about that. I'm still like learning some of the like, um, finer details uh, of this one. So if there's anything that I can't exactly remember how to do on the Path of Exile one, which is generally better, um, I'll ask chat. But... There are a lot of things we can do here. So what are we going to talk about today? Bargain hunting. Uh, and what I mean by that is especially like buying things for, for like very cheap, like making your money stretch as much as possible. And that can be like very, very hard for a lot of people. Um, and then the episode after this is going to be price checking. So they're, they'll be like kind of intertwined, but we're going to do like 45 or 50 minutes of this stuff. And alerts are off and stuff right now. Um, so we're going to like just look through like different categories. And we're going to show a little bit about like different stat filters. That's the only thing I haven't really done that much on Path of Excel that comes such trade. Um, that I'm used to doing on PoE trade. But right. So let's first look at buying, for example, jewelry. So let's look at rings. Um, I just want to look at the item groups here. There. Pseudo rest. I think that's the one I want. Pretty sure that's... Anyway. Um, let's just check real quick. That that's the stat I'm looking for. No. Hmm. That's not the same in POE trade. Not like this? I know. Ah, there. No. It should be that one. Ah, no, it is that one. I had the one above. Just slightly different. I'm so confused. This is so much easier in POE trade. Plus is what you want. Ah, it is that. Oh my god. There. Excellent. That's like the thing that I'm like used to doing in POE trade and I haven't done on the uh, the best one here. Yes, I, I, I see now. Anyway. So, uh, this is going to be very important. So this is the plus hashtag percentage total elemental resistance. And uh, what this does is it searches for not specifically fire, cold, or lightning, but just for the total amount of elemental resistance that is going to be on the ring. The reason that is good is if you are specifically searching, and, and we can use this for any category, um, but uh, we can specifically search for fire and cold and lightning, but that will limit our searches a lot more. What if I need like 60 fire rests on one ring, right? There's going to be a lot less to have that than have like 20 fire, 20 cold, and 20 lightning. Um, so normally what I recommend doing when trying to make the most of your budget is to be very, very generic on the first few items that you're searching for. So let's, let's take some examples here. Uh, we'll do two searches. We'll do one that has total fire resist 40 and total cold resist 20. Or actually, even better, let's do a higher one. 70. Um, maybe we do 50. Actually, 45, 25 versus 70. Uh, ring. Let's look at the... I hope this shows the same as POE trade where it'll show like the total number of results. Right. So here we have 332 results. Whereas the one with specifically fire and cold has 21. Right? The reason I'm showing you that is to give you an indication of how many more there is. Um, like you're, you're limiting yourself by being very specific. So what I end up doing 
is I'll be very specific with the last item or last two items. Like, oh, well, I only need 13 fire rest now and then you can focus on life. Whereas on the first ones, you try to be very, very generic with the pseudo search. Uh, and that's why that's so strong. So, now on top of that, let's try to do buyout price. Chaos orb equivalent. Let's say that we want a, we want to spend a maximum of 8 chaos, right? That's the maximum that I want to spend right now. Then it's loading 49. What if we're doing the same thing here on the one with 21? I don't want to spend more than 8 chaos. And we're down to 4, right? You see the trend here? There's a very, very big difference. Um, and I'd say... I, I would, I can't speak for people, but I would say very few new players are currently using the pseudo sets. Would everyone agree? New players, feel free to give feedback. Uh, but yeah, I would say like this isn't like widely used and it is extremely useful. Um, so now there's more. There's more. And here is where the mind blowing comes. You can click. I'm hoping this works in this too and not just be a train. You can click on this and it'll sort by the highest. So now you'll see here, boom, I can buy this ring. This is 119 total elemental resistance and get nine more just by blessing it. And it has an open prefix that you can craft life or it has energy shield. Like this is an amazing energy shield ring, right? So clicking that pseudo stat will list it from top to bottom. This is only seven chaos. This is a bargain. This is a really good ring. Um, so make sure you like do pay attention here. Um, some things won't be shown. Or does it show everything now? It, it used to not show like rarity. But I think that POE, this website does. Uh, and you can see like other ones um, as well. So this one also has an open prefix. It has um, cold, lightning, even more cold. So this is a crazy amount of cold. Listed two months ago. Yeah, we're, we're going to talk about that later. We're going to talk about that later. But, I mean, the guy's online. He might actually sell it. And this is on Hardcore Harvest. Let's do an example in Harvest real quick. Because it's even easier to buy things there. Sir? Let's look at the difference in Harvest between the two here. Actually, I can just switch this to Harvest. And you'll see, even in Harvest, here we have 2,451 matches. Actually, they're all private league messages. 2,451 matches versus 156. They both have exactly the same amount of um, elemental resistances. You'll see here on Softcore, the best one you can buy, 5 Chaos, 131 total LE res, 50 life, that's an excellent ring, right? That's a really, really good ring. So take, like, remember, this is probably like one of the more simple but important lessons uh, of like really, really good things. And all you do is click the pseudo. Um, now, I want to talk a little bit about, this is going to help software more than hardcore. Um, but whenever you're listing things, or sorry, searching for things, Try to like this guy. This this guy listed this ring a day ago for 5C. He's almost guaranteed to answer. If you messaged this guy and be like, "Hey, I want to buy your Beast World ring," he's gonna sell it. This guy listed it a month ago. He could be like just like he could have passed out at his computer. He'd just be like he he could just like have left himself logged in. <laughs> Probably not gonna sell it to you. <laughs> F in chat. He's gone, Jim. But. <clears throat> Uh, but yeah, like, if you are list like messaging people that are listing things very recently, then you do have like a massive increased chance, not more, just increase for that they will actually reply to you, and then you don't need to message ten people. Um, same with like buying currency, like scroll down a little bit before you start messaging people. Oh yeah, we should change the stream title to bargain hunting. Madaki, can you do that? Now, the really, really nice thing about the pseudo res here is you can apply this to anything. Well, not jewels, but you can do, for example, boots. 
And then you have loads of boots with, with shit tons of res. And you can do the same thing again. Um, here you have boots with 136. And obviously we can throw in a few more search terms here. Like, well, I want my movement speed boots to have at least 20 movement speed. And I want them to have um, at least 70 life. Right? As a quick example. Now, for only only 8 chaos or below, we only have 7 results. But you can like play around with that. Well, we're trying to go for budget items. Um, and there are other things like this that are important as well. So now instead of searching for both movement speed and life. Where'd the filters go? It's supposed to be the same search. You were the chosen one. Okay, well, in, I guess I won't keep it up. Uh, add a new stat group. group. And so we want these as well. And then I want either, wait, actually, I want an and or, wait, actually, no, I want, hold on, I want one of these, I want movement speed, actually, we can do two, we can do movement speed, we want at least 20 movement speed, or, I'll show more about this in a second, logic gates with this, yeah, or, uh, empty prefix modifier, right? So, um, I'll, I'll show and like talk a little bit more here. But what we're searching for now is we want the boot to have at least 70 elemental resistance. Not being specific here gives us a lot more examples. So we have fire, cold, or lightning, right? Uh, we'll not search for chaos stress. And then now that is like, that is like a guaranteed. This is just like on. Then we have a count filter here, which we did by add count group count. We have two, and what this means is that it's searching for movement speed, or max life, or prefix, and it needs two of these. So now we're going to find boots that have, like, we get quite a lot of results now. You remember that, how many did we get before, when we were more specific? Before we wanted 20 movement speed, 70 life, plus the resist, and I think we only had, like, less than 30 so shoes. Now we're basically search seven. We only had seven searches. Now we're basically searching for the same thing, but we're getting 192. So now you're like beginning to see a little bit about the power uh, of your search here. Because this is one alchemy. I can just slap 24 movement speed on here for four chaos, right? Or even lower movement speed for like an alchemy. So these are super nice budget boots. Uh, we can again like click on the search. And then we see like, look at these. 5 chaos, 125 res, 75 life, throw 24c. These are amazing boots for 9 chaos. They're, they're amazing boots for 9 chaos. So you see a little bit of like the true power here of, uh, of searching like that. And I'm going to blow your minds even more. Make sure you're sitting for this one. So let's see that I am playing a, uh, I'm playing a, a melee build, Reeve, right? I'm uh, I'm dual wielding and I'm using swords, right? These are the parameters. And now I want to search for jewels. Because jewels are very, very hard for a lot of people. What stats can I use? And I think to myself, I'm also crit, right? I'm crit. So I'm like, what can I use? What are the stats that I can use? Well, I'm swords. So then I search for sword. Then I just copy paste that like that. So I have it like don't have to retype it as much. Hmm. There are no damage with swords on jewels, right? So that one doesn't matter. But there is attack speed with swords on jewels. And you can use, uh, and then physical damage with swords. And you can use the, the PUEDB website uh, if you're, like, new to this. Uh, and then you could, for example, open a crimson or viridian jewels. And you could sort of look through uh, if you're very new to this. I obviously, I know all of these, so I don't have to. Which is nice for me. But, uh, like, scan through them and think... Which ones do I want? No, we're not going to do groups for this. This is like the, the super fast version. This is how I normally do it. Um, and then I'm like, is there anything more with swords? We have attack speed with swords, physical damage with swords. And we do also have... Can we have critical multi with swords? No, it's crit multi with one-handers. Multiplier. So then, well, I have, um, I have global critical strike multiplier. Excellent. Critical strike multiplier with melee. Um, and then I have 
I'm dual wielding. I can do that. I'm critical strike multiplier while dual wielding. Right? And I'll explain what I'm doing as well. Because a lot of people are like question marking probably right now. Um, uh, whoops. Oh, and we're, we're one-handers. That's excellent, right? Uh, so now, and, we, and I might miss some as well. Because I can't remember everything. Now I have to think, well, there are more attack speed ones. What other attack speed ones are there? There's attack speed. Whoops, wrong one. Don't want to use that for this. There's attack speed. There is attack and cast speed. There is attack speed while dual wielding. And then I think that's all of them. Um, and there's physical damage. Uh, there's generic physical damage. Oh, and then important to remember increased damage. That works for most builds. There's increased melee damage. Wait, please say I can change this group. Oh, that's why somebody said add the group first. Kill me. Oh no, I can, right? Oh no, the first one can't be changed. Oh, it can't. Thank fuck. Woo! You can? Yeah, thank you. I was like, I was a little worried there. Uh, increased melee damage. Uh, what else? Oh, yeah, and then we have the physical damage ones. Do we have physical damage with swords? Uh, I think it might be called global physical damage. I don't know if it's percentage. It doesn't really matter, actually. Even if we add both. Uh, and then we have physical damage. While. I'm going to change some of these as well. But anyway, you would go through the list. And you would add everything. And then maybe you add like an and loop. With uh, maximum increased maximum life. Because I'm a hardcore player. I want life, right? Or you maybe want energy shield. Uh, or maybe you're running a stat stacking build. And you really want int. Um, and now a lot of people are like. Well, this is, ruined. this is like 20 months. Like, what are you doing? Well, first let's look for a three stat jewel. Because. Uh, and, and this is something people do. Some people would be uh, following a guide. And they'll see that in the guide for Reeve. Oh, and Reeve, we can put area damage as well. Uh, in the guide, maybe the guy has area damage. And he has... Um, fucking attack speed while dual wielding. And he has maximum life, right? This would be... This in particular... Let's see. Increase maximum life. This in particular, I know, is something a lot of people do. They would search for a jewel like this. Right? These are the these are the three stats that are in the in the jewel. There's 56. I'll buy this for three chaos. Right? And then maybe maybe the jewel has and like obviously if it's a very meta build, it's gonna be even more expensive expensive. Uh and then maybe maybe the jewel is like this. It's a four stat jewel. There's not even any for sale. You're just frustrated, right? But then let's take a look at our uh this is gonna be a four stat jewel. So what this is going to do now, it is going to pick three of these stats plus life. And look how many choices we have. We have 208. This is four stat jewels. Now, four stat is always going to be fairly expensive for any useful build. If you're playing a more like clunky or weird build, you might actually be able to get four stat, uh, uh, especially on damage, very, very cheaply. Actually, we might be able to get four stat damage builds um, basically very cheap here. Yeah, here you see 4 stat damage builds, 5C, 20, 21. Um, but you can like, find budget builds or jewels very easily. So let's search for two of the damage mods and life. Look how many results we get. 1,667. And then you can go through, like, there are more complicated things that I'm not going to cover now with, like, priorities and stuff. Uh, with weightings and, like, okay, sure, attack speed is better for me than physical damage, so you'll prioritize that. That's very complicated to set up and... Yeah, people do that for themselves sometimes. But this that I just did right now is very, very easy. And you can see, again, the power of being a little bit more broad here. This is something all of you can easily learn to do. Um, so here, like, this is a one-stat jewel. 
but it has melee damage, it has life, and crit multi while dual wielding. If I was playing Reeve, this is an amazing jewel, and it's 1C. The guy is dead because it's listed a month ago. He's not going to reply, but six days ago, this guy might still be alive. He's hanging in there. Look at this. Attack speed while dual wielding, 7% life, increased area damage, and one extra open slot. Um, and like a quick added extra tip just for free for all you watching there in the back. Pay attention. Uh, since this has one open slot, something that would be very, very good to do with this, a good usage for it, is um, with Betrayal, if you get Leo, which I don't have anywhere right now, but Leo on research, whenever he's level 3, is very good for exalting jewels. Because you don't want to, you don't want to just like throw away an exalt, um, fuck, okay, you don't want to throw away an exalt willy-nilly. But the Leo Exalt, like, that's just like leveling Leo to level 3. So using that for like slamming jewels, it saved my Exalt. <coughs> I was committed. Um, so yeah, this is very, very nice. Um, and then we could do like, just because I know um, people can get a little bit confused. We'll do like a quick like spell example. So let's say I'm doing Fireball, right? trying to remember all uh actually this this is going to be a great example because i'm going to show a little bit on like how i find everything out actually let's go arc i like arc so let's say i'm playing arc right then i then i look at my arc gem and you do see some tags well it's spell it's chaining and it's lightning in some cases this will help you a lot because you get to understand like what tags are useful um so let's say I want an arc jewel. Well, I can get spell damage. How many spell damage things can I throw on here? I have spell damage. Am I dual wielding or am I using a shield? Well, I'm using a shield. Um, let's see. And I think that's all the spell damage one. Am I casting it myself? Yeah, I'm self casting arc. Cool. Then we can add cast speed. And then you add like you add cast speed. You add attacking cast speed. Um, you'll see like quite a lot of people, especially racing, will care a lot about attack speed. So they would also maybe put in like actual attack speed like this. Uh, and maybe attack speed uh, while holding a shield and attack speed while using a scepter or something. Because um, that can make your shield charge faster. But let's say that uh, we, we aren't a racer and we don't care about this as all, at all. We will do attacking cast speed. We'll do cast speed while holding a shield. Um, and then we'll do lightning damage. Increase lightning damage. Is there any lightning damage while? I don't think so, right? No. Uh, whoops. We'll do lightning damage. Um, is there elemental damage? And then when you're not sure about something, you bring up the, um, the, for example, cobalt jewel, if that's what you're, uh, gonna need here. And then you can look through the list, right? Then here you see all the spell damage ones. We have spell damage staff, dual wielding, shield. Um, and then, oh, and that's a good time to remember. Increased damage works for pretty much everything. Um, we have cast speed with lightning skills. And then we're also, we're critical, right? We're lightning skill and we're critical cast speed with lightning skills. Then you throw in all the, the critical strike multipliers. And then there's like quite a few more critical strike multipliers we can add. And then you just go through the entire list. Not doing normal jewel plus abyssal combo jewel search. I don't even know how to do that. It's a good thing you're one of the teachers, Carve. I'm excited. Um, but yeah, so this is like really, really nice. Uh, and you can just go through the list and add. And then when you have to the count, it's going to be life, two damage stats. And we have 500 different jewels. The cheapest one being half a Paranda's coin. It does not get cheaper than that. Um, the way you would do this, you would like take one Caparanus coin, you would take a saw, put it in like a wench or something. Shit, I don't even know what words are anymore. Just saw it a half, give him half, keep the other half. Maybe throw in the full Paranus coin. Can you save the filters? Um, I'm not sure. I mean, you could bookmark them. I think. Yeah, they do like get that. You can save that part at the top. <sighs> um, so that's some like really, really good things there for searching. Hmm. And, and the really nice thing about that is that you just get so many more options. Uh, because with everything, when you are being very specific in your search, you're going to get so many 
uh, less results back. And we saw that particularly with the resist. And the pseudo resist as well is uh, is kind of nice for jewels because you can do. A... We'll show that again. How much is it you can get up to 46? Yeah, so the most resist you can get on a jewel. Okay, dude, synthesized. Okay, well, the most resist you can get on a jewel normally is you can get 10 all rests, and then you can get 12 to like two specific rests, right? So 30 plus 12. Um, yeah, that is like 50 something. That's awesome. So yeah, 54 is the most resist you can get on a normal jewel. This is really good. Really, really good for plugging up resists when you're desperate and stuff like that. Maybe you fucked up and the new item you bought like wasn't as good as you thought it was. Um, yeah. Sometimes as well, that can be useful is say you're trading with this guy. You can have somebody just link you an item. Uh, you can be like, hey, can you link me this item? I want to like try it in POB and see if it fits for me. Um, because, oops. Um, the copy pasting that I showed in the last one actually works on chat links. So I don't, this isn't because it's in my inventory. That's just because it's in the chat link. I can now go and put it into POB because this is now on my paste. You can copy from the trade site. Holy shit, I didn't know that. Excellent. You, can't, you couldn't on POE trade. Can I actually? That would be even better. Wait, how? Hey. What do you hover over? Oh, excellent. Copy item. I didn't actually know that. See, even I'm learning. I have 20,000 hours in this game. Okay, I don't use POE. Uh, the, the trade. I also don't play trade much anymore. Learning. We're learning together chat. So, yeah, even better. You don't even have to message people. Learning together. Yep. Um, so, yeah. I didn't know there was a copy item thing. This is a flares. I know. Well, I'm trying to teach trade league players things, too. I'm allowed to learn, too. Uh, yay, less interaction with humans. But, yeah, like, getting these tools to, like, plug up is uh, very, very good as well. Um, and then, let's see, what else? And like, sometimes, sometimes you don't always have, um, like a max chaos count. Uh, what, well, there's one more thing we can show as well, like elemental damage. Sometimes you don't really care about, um, which is the best one. There's one that is like total elemental damage, at least on PO trade. That's percentage. I think it's this one. But is that just going to search for the low end? That's kind of sad. Because there's one in... One in POE trade. That does the average. Where's the average one here? It doesn't matter. We'll play around with it. It does search averages. Oh, okay. Cool. Okay, cool. Let's say we're looking for a scepter. Um, and then obviously you need to have like some idea of what you're searching for here. So we can like, uh, we can look at scepters and search for, oh, actually I don't want elemental damage anyway. I want elemental damage to spells. That's what we're going to search for. So let's look at the, the spell mod on the scepter. My brain is struggling to see. Um, this is again on the PoEDB side thing. You can see here the cremating. And the, the highest item level for the spell mods is only 74. So you do get these pretty quickly. Um, but like, yeah, the average here would probably be like 60 or something. Huh. Let's search for 60 and see if that works. Let's see what we find. And then the more important thing and one of the things I want to show off here is the power of like clicking on something. So like the highest possible, this is like uncapped on price, but the highest possible uh, here, 108 uh, average to spells is the highest on anything. Obviously this is 25X, but that's just to give us an idea of like what the highest average. Uh, so that's with lightning, but the power of being able to click these mods is very, very strong. Obviously this is a great scepter. 
And we're not about to buy that. But, um, let's say, uh, let's look for one. So, let's see. So, we're searching for a spell that receptor. Uh, and seeing as like 108 was so high, we can search for like 50 as the minimum we want. 108 is the max that exists for sale. And then we're going to search, we're going to search for some spell damage. It's going to search for that as an explicit. Because then it won't, if we do the pseudo one, it'll include the implicit, uh, of, for example, ones, if we're being less specific. But we're just going to search for the actual role. So let's search for um, spell damage. Actually, seeing as we're not searching for very high, we can put this in a separate group again of count two. And then we can do either spell damage as an explicit or an open prefix. Again, this is very strong to search for. So we'll search for either open, that's around the same as the craft. Uh, it gives us a lot more results, being a little less specific. Um, and then, yeah, let's try searching for that. And we should find a load. We only found 12. Let's see. This one actually has spell damage and open empty. So just because the average is so high. Oh, that's why. I'm an idiot. Sorry. I was so confused why that showed so few. There we go. 274. So here we get the choice between either open spell damage or open... or Sorry, either that it has spell damage or an open prefix. And, like, you can be, like, more greedy, right? You can, like, there's nothing wrong with checking the greedier options first. Because maybe there is something like, this is only 7C. This is an open prefix and the spell damage um, as well. So you can, like, play around with it. Uh, but it does, like, give you a lot of freedom. Three is better. I mean, yeah, the more stats is better. So you can start fairly greedy. Um, one thing that's really important for, like, especially buying, like, maybe more niche things is the, um, the auto search. This one. Um, so let's just, like, clear the filter here. Okay, filter's cleared. Uh, let's see. Active search. Now, what this is going to do is this is going to give you. This is why the servers are lagging. Anyway, um, it is going to do a live search and it is going to like keep telling you. I can't believe there's that many trades going in still. It'll tell you when something is listed or changed. So say maybe I'm searching for something. There's nothing like in the price range I want to buy. You can set up a live search. And maybe hope that some noob is going to undersell his item. And that's when you strike. You're like, ha! This is worth at least 20 exults. This fucker just listed it for 7. <laughs> and you buy that fucker's item for 7 chaos. And then you can either use it for yourself or just relist the item. That you're like, wow, dude. It's worth 20 x. Scam noobs. Scam new players. No, but like, honestly, like you do get like some like sometimes like very fair deals. Um, or good deals that are recently listed. Now, sometimes you will notice that people can be very apprehensive about selling an item they've just listed. Sometimes people will get very defensive, like they've just listed an item, you instantly message to buy, they might not even reply to you. They might just, uh, like, a, like a quick anecdotal story here, I had um, an item I was buying and it was like 10C or something and it was just listed. And I messaged the guy to buy it. Um, and it was worth like, probably like 20, 30 C. So um, he didn't even reply to me. Then he uh, relisted it for 20 C. And I was like, well, I still want to buy it. And he was like, he relisted it for 40 C. And I'm like, well, I don't really want to buy it, but I don't have much choice here. So I guess I'll message him to buy it 40 C. Still not replying. He still relisted it. Now he relisted it at like 2X. And I'm like, well, now I don't want your item anymore, but I am going to see how far down the rabbit hole this guy goes. Um, and then I messaged him, I want to buy your item for two exalts. He listed it for four. Uh, and it like finally ended up with like 10 exalts and I stopped messaging him. I checked at the end of the league, that item was still for sale. He never sold that item. I would have bought it for 40C, but it didn't even bother talking to me. It just kept listing it higher and higher. It never sold. So he could have had 40C. Uh, it, was, it happens. It happens. Um, if you underlist an item, you get spam with 20 offers. Yeah, true. So all I imagine that that guy went was like, 
Ah, yes. Nobody's messaging me for my item. Just the way I like it. So it's like very, very frustrating. I generally try to undersell most of my items. Obviously, it's very easy for me because I do have like an idea of what my items are worth. Um, and that comes with practice. That's one of the more like complicated things in Path of Exile. Uh, is that you, you don't really like know that as easily, right? It takes a lot of a lot of practice and a lot of experience and being able to play a lot of different builds. Um, so that'll help a lot there. Um, and like the more advanced items you're searching for as well, the more complicated it'll be. Sometimes a player will get a little obsessed with like every stat on an item. We'll be talking more about that in the next episode, which is about price taking your item and finding out what it's worth. Um, but it's about learning what are the important stats. Sometimes a player will find an item, right? And maybe it like, let's say it looks like this, but it also has like seven mana on kill. I know for a fact that there are some players that will be throwing the seven mana on kill into the stat and going, there are no items like mine for sale. It must be priceless. There's nothing listed like this, right? Like that happens so much where people will, will value every stat on the item. Uh, and, and again, something I'll go more into in the next episode, but then it's more important to um, think about what are the actual valuable stats here. Is like the crit really that important on this item or would it be worth a lot without it? Um, for example. Hello, <laughs> Zanuta. No, you just have to be realistic about pricing. If you're getting a lot of messages, then you should price check your item manually. Yes, that is correct. That is correct. Have you gone over the same name on a rare item? Doesn't equal the same stats. <clears throat> so I generally don't want to do that basic. But as a quick story, I did have a very, very memorable story of somebody coming into my channel. Uh, and this is the item and pricing related. And they said, Zezarin, your, your cyclone build is dog shit. I've followed it to the letter and I can't kill anything. You're a terrible build creator and you should stop making uh, builds that are preying on new players. And I was like... I know for a fact that my cyclone guide is amazing. The fuck? I was here for that. I was like, I know for a fact that the guide is awesome. I made it and I don't make bad guides. Um, so I was very offended and I was like, wait, are you still here? Can I help you? And he's like, yes, I'm still here. I'm very angry. You build shit. I was like, thank you for your profile. And I was using a rare axe called Agony Splitter. He was also using a rare axe called Agony Splitter. My axe was an Agony Splitter with like 630 PDPS. His axe was an Agony Splitter with like 90 PDPS. It had nothing. No, I wasn't shocked. Um, so he had like, he had literally just gone for the same name. And that does happen a lot, particularly with Diablo players, like crossing over to Path of Exile, because like unique items and stuff is very, very common uh, in other games. So if, if I go, let me just like open like PoE trade real quick. And look for like... Oh my god, there are actually items ag named Agony Splitter. But you can see here, there's a very big difference with Agony Splitter with 522 PDPS. And you have Agony Splitter with 194. So... That does happen and it is important. At least it didn't come with a limb splitter. Remind people to update their items once a day if you're not selling within that day. So the way I play play uh, trade leagues and for selling things, I would have like uh, sale sale one, sale two, sale three, etc. And then I would go back and look at the older items. Anything that is like say say that I'm all the way on sale six and somebody messages me for something in sale one, that's probably been there for a few days. I'm gonna sell that item no matter what. So if he offers me like 20C and is listed for for 2X, I'll probably be like, yeah, sure. It's been up for days. No one else is like even like haggled on it. Um, so yeah, sure. I'm down, right? Um, that's like part of the, the system that I use that. A lot of people trying to overtie, overprice items because of the base. Honestly, like a lot of people overprice because they are scared of the worst feeling in Path of Exile, which is, oh, I just sold like, I sold this item for 2X. And then an experienced player is going like, yeah, that was worth 20, right? Nobody wants to experience that feeling. It's terrible. I've done it myself. I, I've undersold items. And that is why people try to overprice 
um, and are are terrified of like scamming themselves by just like not knowing enough. Um, now, because of that fear, so many people um, will end up overpricing and they're actually hurting themselves and costing themselves a lot of currency. Um, something I did once, uh, and this was back in Nemesis League, and I had amazing boots. They were 30 movement speed, which was the max at the time. Uh, and I think the highest resist you could get was 44. And I had 44 fire, 44 cold. I, I still have these boots, by the way, because they didn't sell. Uh, 44 fire, 44 cold, and like 26 uh, lightning, and, and 78 life, which I think was the highest on boots back then. And I got offered 12 exalts or something, or 15 exalts. Mirrors back then were 26. So it was like, it wasn't mirror worthy boots, but almost. And then it was like a crazy amount to be offered. And I was like, I got offered this very early. It was the first day I had them up for sale and they got offered that much. And I said, no, because I was like, I want more. I want at least two I sold more. And the guy was like, no, that's all I'm paying. And I'm like, well, tough. I never sold those boots. I later started getting offers for like eight. And I was like, I don't want to sell them for eight. I've, I've had loads more offers for them. So what I start to do in Trade League is I will, you know, I will make sure that I'm not like scamming myself out of like 20 exalts and stuff. But if the difference is, am I getting 60 chaos for an item or 40? I don't care, right? I'd rather just sell them and make sure that I don't like cat in the bag or whatever. There's some saying. Uh, 10C boots nowadays. Yeah. So just like underselling, but getting a lot of sales and going, fuck it, is, is very, very powerful. Um, I think that's like the main things I wanted to cover for like bargain hunting and stuff like that. It was mostly like the differences between the and loops. Um, one in hand versus two in the bush. Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, that was like the main things I wanted to cover, especially the differences uh, with being a little bit more specific or less specific with your searches. And I hope that helped a lot of people. So hope you guys enjoyed bargain hunting with Cicerin. Thanks for watching. Uh, and again, like, all these are never going to be payload, but if you are enjoying them, the best way to support them is just subbing with Twitch Prime or whatever. Uh, next episode is going to be in 15, 20 minutes, which is price checking with Cicerin. So, yeah. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in 15 minutes. Try to die less than I do. <laughs>